A Family Feud contestant who joked on national TV that getting married was a mistake now on trial, accused of killing his estranged wife. This episode, we're learning the shocking story of a husband who joked on national television that his biggest mistake in life was saying, I do, to his wife at their wedding, and then went on to brutally murder her only a few years later. In 2020, Timothy Blythnick and some of his family members appeared on ABC's hit game show, Family Feud. At one point during the show, the host, Steve Harvey, asked Timothy, what was the biggest mistake that you made at your wedding? Tim answered with, saying I do. Pete, what's the biggest mistake you made at your wedding? Honey, I love you, but said I do. He playfully added, I'm gonna get in trouble for that, aren't I? I love my wife. I'm gonna get in trouble for that, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> in almost a chilling prediction, Timothy was right. That crude joke did land him in a world of trouble, but little did he know the now viral clip would be one of the many damning pieces of evidence that would lead him to being found guilty for murdering his wife. The answer only ranked second on the board, meaning that 20 out of 100 people polled had provided the same response and asked the same question. But even so, Steve didn't seem to agree. Harvey, the Spitfire host known for respecting all women, clapped back by saying, there's going to be a lot of hell to pay at your house. The episode was originally taped in the fall of 2019. The couple divorced in 2021, a year after the episode aired. Rebecca Blythnick was a certified trauma nurse specialist and a sexual assault nurse examiner. The Illinois nurse and mother of three was shot to death in her home on February 23, 2022. Her father, worried that something terrible had happened, found her murdered in the home after she didn't pick up her kids from school and wasn't responding to calls. I ran up the stairs uh, and since she supposedly was sick, um, I went to the bedroom to see if she was laying down, didn't see anything in her bedroom, went into the attached bathroom and that's when I found her body lying on the floor. She, she looked like she was dead. Becky feared for her life and began telling her other close friends about her husband's abusive and increasingly strange behavior. Timothy and Becky were knee deep in a nasty divorce and battling over custody of their three boys. Becky shared her concern about what her crazy ex might do if he lost custody of their children. Shortly before Becky was murdered, she texted her sister with an ominous prediction. If something ever happens to me, make sure the number one person of interest is Tim. This is a text that Becky sent to myself and my husband, Brett, regarding fear for her life. If something ever happens to me, please make sure the number one person of interest is Tim, as that is who would do something to me. Becky sent another text to her childhood friend, writing, I am scared of his behavior and constant lies. On top of that, he has our guns and ammunition. Fearing for her safety, Becky filed a restraining order against him. And in response, almost to stoke the flames further, Tim immediately filed one against Becky too. Becky had admitted to her circle that Tim had scraped at her face, shoved her across the room in front of the kids, often punched walls, and was adamant that Tim had the possibility to become very unstable and unpredictable if things didn't go his way. Several months later, when Becky's father found her cold, lifeless body, he knew immediately that Tim was the monster who shot Becky dead. During the seven-day trial, the jury learned many gruesome facts leading up to the murder of the suburban soccer mom. In February of 2022, Tim Blythnick purchased a bicycle from Facebook Marketplace under the account name John Smith. Sufficient evidence proved that Tim made multiple practice runs by riding to Becky's house on the bike over the course of several days. The jury also learned about his lengthy history of Google searches. Tim's laptop proved that he had been researching how to open my door with a crowbar, how to make a homemade pistol silencer, can you wash off gunpowder residue, and what's the average Quincy Police Department response time. This phone shows searches for the following. How to open my door with a crowbar. How to make a homemade pistol silencer. Footage captured from the neighboring cameras showed a bicyclist traveling near Becky's home the night of the shooting. And while the rider couldn't be positively identified as Tim, the circumstantial evidence was incredibly damning. On the last night of Becky's life, 
Tim executed his premeditated plan. He rode his bike to her house, climbed up to the second floor window, where he used a crowbar to open the window in the same fashion that he learned from his YouTube research, chased her into the bathroom, and shot her 14 times, once for each year of their marriage. He pulled the trigger, not once, not twice, not three times, but 14 times. The jury took less than one day to find him guilty of murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, Timothy Bleefnick, guilty of first-degree murder. Tim was sentenced for two counts of first-degree murder and one count of home invasion in connection with the death of his estranged wife. Illinois jury has found Timothy Bleefnick guilty on all charges. The fateful couple's three boys, six, 10, and 12 years old, are now being raised by Becky's parents. He is set to be sentenced on August 11th, 2023, and will likely receive a life sentence.